Hello everyone, welcome to this video and welcome to this channel. My name is Courtney and if you have never met me before, hi, I am an epic teacher in the previously known as the Jalabukto area, but now I live in the Jambuk province. That is what it's now called. And I teach at five different schools this semester. I teach fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And today I'm going to be making a video all about the expectations and realities of being an epic teacher. So I know that becoming an epic teacher is a really intensive process, both with the application which I know a lot of people make videos on and I want to make one in the future and just passing the interview. It can be a lot of work all the way up until actually getting the job and then you have to move to South Korea. So it's a really big decision that people have to make and that is why I make the videos that I make to just help you be as well informed as possible before you end up making your decision to make sure that this is the best one for you. I'm an information girly and I like to be as prepared as possible. So today I have made a list of expectations versus realities of actually living here in South Korea and what that looks like. A caveat before I make any epic related video is to say that each and every single person's experience is so so different and epic. So all I can talk about is my personal experience. Please feel free to comment down below if you are an epic teacher or you were a previous one and yours was very different. It is valuable to hear different people's perspectives so I can only speak for myself but this is still advice that I think would be helpful for you guys just to be prepared in case your situation is similar to mine. Also I have absolutely love my job. I love working with my kids. It is one of the best jobs I have ever had and I have just really enjoyed my experience here. So number one expectation of coming into Epic, why a lot of people choose to do it, is because they think they will have a lot of free time. While I do think that this is true compared to your typical 9 to 5 work job, there is a little bit of a caveat to that. So I am American and I reference other jobs like being an educator. I'm talking specifically about being an educator in the state. This can be different though depending on what country you come from. So I can only compare it to the states. In the states you're probably looking at your school day starting around 7 30 8 a.m and getting off at 3 30. So in Korea the way it works is classes start at 9 but as teachers we get there at 8 30 so a bit of a later start day but we also end at 4 30 in the afternoon. So by the time you actually get back home usually around 5 o'clock you do have less time in your day than if you're getting off at 3 30. But you also start school a little bit later so you can sleep in some more but just depending on what you like to do just note that you're probably not going to be actually off of work and home until around five. So the reality of this for me is that I teach at four different travel schools, so five schools total. One of those schools I can walk to, it only takes me about 20 minutes, so I can easily get home by five o'clock on those days. But on my travel school days, for instance, on my Friday, it takes me over an hour to get back, usually around an hour and 20 by the time I do my walk. So I actually don't get home until around six. And I leave that morning to get there ahead of time at 7.30. So my workday then looks like 7.30 to 6 p.m. Obviously this is just including commute and a lot of jobs that you're gonna have back home or where you're at right now are going to have commute too. I'm not saying this is super specific to the Epic job, but it's just something to note that it will probably take you longer than what you think. Again, just my experience, some people probably have a 10 minute walk to work and 10 minutes back and it makes their day very short. Another reality of this though that I think is really important is that you can leave your job behind. What I mean by this is if you have a really intensive job right now, something that constantly stresses you out, it's something that you think about once you get home, you might even have to do more work once you get back, which is the reality of a lot of different jobs. Something nice about Epic is you leave work at work. I don't think that should be undervalued. I think that's very important. And if you are someone, again, that's been very stressed out in your job, you're looking for a bit more of a relaxing opportunity to be able to recuperate and just leave work at work, then this is definitely a great job that you'll be able to do that at. Number two, a lot of people either think they will make no money doing Epic or a lot of money doing Epic. The reality of this is it completely depends. Just like when you live anywhere else, you're going to have to take into account how much you eat out, what your living expenses just really are and really how high maintenance of a person you are too. What I mean by that is how expensive your grocery bill is going to be because you want specialty items, completely fine, or how much traveling you want to do on the weekends or on your breaks. All these things are going to add up so it really depends on you. But what I want to make clear here is two things. Number one, the epic salary is definitely a livable wage. That's something that I was concerned about before coming here. I didn't know how much things cost in Korea. Lots of people have different budget videos. Videos, I would like to make one in the future to really show you just how far your wand stretches. Wand is the currency here. So your wage is definitely livable and if you're frugal with it and you're able to save, then 
and you definitely can add a chunk to your savings at the end of the year. So this is just completely dependent on your lifestyle, but you will be able to make it in Korea given the salary from Epic and you can make that stretch really far if you want to. The second thing I want to say here though is I am not placed in Seoul and as someone who's gone to Seoul maybe four times now, Seoul is much more expensive than the province that I live in. The province I live in actually has one of the best cost of living I think out of all of Korea, which is super nice. But if you're going to be placed in Seoul or Busan or even Jeju Island because some Epic teachers are placed there, your expenses are probably going to be a lot higher. So in Seoul, you're probably going to be spending a lot more money on public transport, your groceries might be a little bit more expensive, and of course if you choose to eat out because there's a thousand different options there to eat out, you're just going to be spending a lot more money. So though my wages can stretch pretty far in the small city I live in, if you are living in Seoul or somewhere like that, a big city, do expect that your cost of living is going to be quite a bit higher, just like any city you live in in this world. When it comes to money, you also want to factor in if you have multiple schools, you'll make 150,000 won more, at least currently. If you are in a rural placement, you make more money but out of your paycheck. Please remember that you do have to pay your utilities, which I think can range from probably around 50, 60,000 won all the way up to over 100,000 won. Really depends. I think mine evens out to about 60, 70,000 won, but it can be much more expensive or a little bit less. But also in your paycheck, you will have your pension and your taxes come out. Also note, depending on your government, you will have to pay certain taxes. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on this because this is a really complicated topic and I honestly don't have the knowledge to be able to spread accurately enough right now. But you do have to pay the Korean pension. Depending on your country, you can get that money back at the end. So I believe as a US citizen, I can get that money back once I leave Korea. But I think as a UK citizen, you can't. So it kind of just disappears. So overall, in one point, your money stretches as far as you want. It is what you make it. Number three expectation, you get vacation days when your students get vacation days. Wrong. <laughs> So you get 26 vacation days as an Epic teacher right now. If you're looking at being an Epic teacher in the future, then you'll have to fact check that with the year that you're coming in. But as of right now, we do get 26 vacation days off. So we get national holidays included in that, which counts as Chuseok and things like Children's Day. There are very specific holidays, just like in the States, like President's Day, Labor Day, those type of things we do get off as a school. That is not counted in our 26 vacation days, which is really nice. So I think 26 compared to a lot of jobs is such a score. But if you are coming from education in the States, in the education system, you're going to get Christmas off, you're going to get Thanksgiving, you're also going to have your winter holiday, however long that is for your school, and your summer holiday, which is usually June and July. You as an educator in the States would have a lot more time off than Epic teachers end up having. But still, I think 26 days is generous. It just means that during winter break and summer break, when the kids are gone, you're still going to have to come in unless you take one of those 26 days and just desk warm. The reality that hit really hard for me in this is that I ended up saving a lot of my vacation days. Instead of spending it in the winter time, I wanted to spend it in the summertime so I could have a bit longer vacation or even have the opportunity to go back home if I wanted to. The way it works with your schools is that you also have things that are called camps, so summer and winter camps. I know people here who have not had to do camps before, so this is really dependent again on your school and your situation and how many you have. Because I have five schools now and I had three last semester, I taught two winter camps and I taught two summer camps. What that means is that I cannot take my 26 days on those camps. So I only have the rest of the break that I can actually take my time off. So for me, I just found out I have two different summer camps and the way that the schools set the date, I can actually take all my vacation days this year. My advice to you is that if you come and you ask about camps and know that you have camps possibly, take your time off probably more in the winter than in the summertime. Allot it so that it's more of an even divide. You think you can take a large chunk of time off? Maybe you can, but for me, I cannot. And again, I wish someone told me that. Number four, expectation. Once you teach once, you'll kind of get in the groove of things. You'll know what's happening. You're good to go. The reality is you have so many co-teachers to work with, at least in my case, once again, you never know what's going to happen in that classroom. So because I teach at five different schools, that means I actually work with about nine or 10 co-teachers this semester. Now five is going to be the most schools that you can work at. So please know a lot of people's experience will be different than this. That means when I step into the classroom, I have to be able to kind of meet their needs and the style that they teach. 
A lot of times that just means I completely teach the class, which is fantastic because I can do that at every single school. It makes my life a bit easier than a lot of collaboration with this many people. But sometimes I step in and they have a certain way of running their classroom. Again, completely fine, but I have to be able to adapt to that and adapt my activities to that. I teach two different textbooks this semester and two different grades. So I have to be able to lesson plan, organize myself and teach in the environment that they want me to that's accommodating to that co-teacher and do it successfully every day five days a week. So that is a bit complicated, and though it sounds more complicated than what it actually is, it's just simply meeting the expectations where they're at and fulfilling it and being a great teacher. Just something to note, I think you'll have a lot of different Korean surprises as then you get to school one day and they tell you that you're on lesson two, but actually you're on lesson five. And then you don't have materials prepared, so you gotta pull something right out of thin air and make it work. That has happened to me so many times, but I also know teachers that that has not happened to them once. For some reason, I have tended to collect a lot of those situations that turn into really funny stories after the fact. But just be open and coming to Korea and understand that your experience can really range. It's okay, it's a great learning opportunity. If you are looking at becoming a better teacher, you're wanting to see what teaching is like, I think getting thrown into the fire in the worst case scenario is actually really great. It helps refine you and it's definitely helped push me into the education system and truly learn what it means to be a teacher. Number five, people go one of two ways with this. Knowing no Korean is perfectly fine, or you have to know Korean to come to Korea and teach. The reality of this is that you do not need to know Korean in order to become an epic teacher. Of course, this absolutely helps, but I know that this is something a lot of people are scared about before coming. So currently with Epic, you do actually have to take a little training course, which they will explain once they contact you about getting the job. You do have to take that before coming, and some of those courses include the foreign language or Korean videos to be able to learn basic, basic, basic Korean before coming. So I do not fluently speak Korean by any means. I know enough conversational Korean to be able to go to a coffee shop and have my order properly taken. I also can say, hi, bye, my name's Courtney, I'm from America, thank you, or excuse me, or just the most basic things that you should definitely know coming into a foreign country. So you do not need to know Korean to come here, but of course it is so, so helpful. Taking Korean lessons I think is a really great and amazing thing if you are wanting to do that. I think definitely informing yourself about the culture before coming to is helpful because even if you can't understand the language and what's happening, you can understand through context what they're either talking about or the situation that's occurring. So number six expectation is that you will be very isolated where in reality, you have a great opportunity to be able to meet people and to be able to especially be in contact with a lot of other expats here, either through Epic, which you have the orientation, so you're able to meet people or other hogwans here. There are a lot of foreigners. Now for me though, I don't live in a big city like I said so there's a lot fewer and a lot more limited foreigners but if you can connect with other teachers in your area that can be really nice so if you're living in a province that is a bit more country style you'll probably have fewer connections but if you live in a place like Seoul then you're going to have a lot more but if your expectation is that you have to be isolated you're gonna be on your own you won't be able to make friends because you can't speak Korean that's not necessarily true I've met some incredible friends here that I never would have expected and some of them are Korean and a lot of them are native teachers and so you will be able to connect and find people as long as you initiate it you reach out you take the steps in trying to make it happen there are definitely people here who speak English and there is a potential for you to make incredible and amazing and lasting friendships even more so in that you can make incredible incredible co-workers or co-teachers who are Korean who have lived here and can give you great advice for living in a new country which is just amazing thank you guys so so much for watching I hope that this video was helpful and just being able to level out things in your mind of what to expect, which you think might happen with Epic, and then what actually that looks like living in Korea. If you have any ideas for the type of video you would like me to make in the future and what would be helpful for you, definitely leave a comment down below. I would love to see it, and I will see you in the next video. I hope you have the absolute best day of your life. Bye!